All right, so let's get into using gradients. Um, we're going to cover some of the basics in this video of how to use the gradient tool. There's a lot of different ways in Photoshop that we can apply gradients, but we're going to access the gradient tool. So you will notice that it is in the toolbar um, that is sometimes nested underneath this paint bucket tool. So we've got it activated. And by default, we've got a lot of options up here. I just want to go over a few of them. First of all, we've got all these different types of gradients, so you will see a lot of options you can check out. The basic ones are going to be the ones that we're going to cover um, today. So the first one goes into foreground and background color. The next one is the one we're going to use today, which is foreground to transparent. And then this third one is just black to white. Um, so those will be very quick and easy to go to and are, are very common to use um, for various things, especially when you're masking and doing things with design. Um, up at the top, this options bar though, we have five different types of gradients. Um, when you hover them, it does tell you the type of gradient. Um, the linear and the radial are probably the two most common that you will use. The blend modes and the opacity, more than likely you won't use these. You'll actually use those options in your layers panel instead, but they are options for a lot of tools. And then this reverse we'll talk about in just a second. It just allows you to reverse the gradient direction. So when you activate the tool, you'll notice a cross um, bar pop up. Um, and it does basically look like a little plus sign and we can drag or draw a line in any which direction. Now, before I actually draw, draw this, I need to test a color that you're going to be able to see. So we'll go ahead and pick this blue color. And you'll see up here how it goes from blue to transparent. So when I drag this, let's just check my layers. So I do have a new layer going. Um, when I drag this plus sign now, it is going to create a gradient in that direction. So the way gradients work is you start with one side, you click and you hold, and you let go whenever you're ready to make that gradient. Now the longer this line is, the more soft the gradient. The shorter the line, the more abrupt the gradient. Um, and you can drag multiple directions, you know, um, and you can also at any point go back to this history panel and get rid of anything that you may not be able to undo through Photoshop's Command Z options. Um, to reverse your gradient, and again this is an option that you may or may not want. Um, a lot of the times I find I am rushing to turn it off if I'm working in a, a lab environment. So it basically makes the colors go in the reverse direction. So that is reverse, and if I do that again, and I click and hold, the blue comes from this direction. So it's good to know that the options there, honestly, I find I turn it off more if it happens to get turned on in a lab environment. Now the next thing is um, we can make any selection area and we can use gradients inside of these selection areas. You all should be starting to connect that um, ability to edit and manipulate things when their selections are created. So in this case, if a selection is created, and I make a gradient, it's going to stay inside of that selection. So that might be really useful to help you know how to control gradients in certain spaces. And that does work with all these other gradients as well. So um, it's, it's just good to know. Now in this case, I did want to show you one other option. Um, now it's very often that graphic designers get um, provided with images and they have to make an advertisement and the image they're provided with is not the same exact proportion or doesn't have enough of the background to fit the ad. It usually is unprofessional just cut off the image. Not always, but in a lot of cases. And so it is going to be helpful to know how to transition um, this image by using a gradient. So I'm actually going to test some of this lighter color of our dog. And we're going to take this layer here and we're just going to basically, on this layer, drag a gradient as much as you need. We'll hide this layer panel for a minute. And we can drag it from multiple areas. Now because this is on another layer, I'm not too worried about if I can cover up the dog. Um, because I can, at any given point, um, use masking to help me. So I'll just basically soften this as much as I can. And this is just a real quick edit, so just know that you know you can come in at any point and give it a lot more 
TLC and care around this dog, but a mask basically can help us bring that dog back anywhere that we've overlapped it. So the way that I'm applying this is um, we have used a mask and we're painting black on it to reveal the dog that is beneath it. Let's delete that mask. Not sure how that got added to it. Then we can go in at any point if we need to bring anything back. Like if we made a mistake, we can just hit X and paint with white. So again, the mask is painting black to reveal that dog beneath it. And then you have all that space over here on the right. Now, obviously, I would take a lot more time to touch up around the top and stuff, but you can see that like we don't see a line there. And if we had to use this for an advertisement now, um, we do have a lot more space that we can work with so that we can actually um, design something over on the right side. So gradients are very useful, um, not just to do really cool, fun gradients, but they are very helpful in various types of editing designs and um, just helping you perfect things that you're working on in Photoshop. So it is going to be helpful for you to learn those basics and then we will cover um, some more concepts that go into more of the details um, in another lesson.